Let us thank our poets, Chisao Hata, Nolo Sugai Bogol, Justin Takaha White, Michiko Kornhauser, and the musicians, Yukiko Gosen and Peter Zisa. Thank you again. So we have two last speakers. Sean Richard Agusa is a Japanese American. He has family roots in Hiroshima, born and raised here in Oregon. We welcome him to tell a story about recently going to Japan on a relief trip to tell us about what's happening there today. So welcome, Sean. Good afternoon. I want to get to the first page here. Uh, my name is Sean Agusa. Hey there. Um, and recently I had the honor of sharing an amazing experience with 87 brothers and sisters as we traveled to northeastern Japan on the flight of friendship led by my friends Sho and Lowen Dezeno. We went there to help for, as you probably have heard by now, on March 11th, 2011, a magnitude 9.0 earthquake occurred just off the coast of northeastern Japan. The earthquake was so powerful that it shifted the earth on its axis. The earthquake also generated a series of tsunami waves towards the Japanese coastline, but it was just it was for just such an eventuality that the Japanese had extensively trained and prepared. The coastline was even fortified with man-made seawalls. Take, for example, a section of the coastline just 140 miles north of Tokyo where a 15-foot seawall protected the reactors of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. 47 minutes after the earthquake, those 15-foot fortifications disappeared below a 47-foot tidal wave. And that's when, with respect to the situation at Fukushima, things started to go wrong. But let me quickly take you back to what me and my flight of friendship comrades recently witnessed with our own eyes. Eight weeks ago, our group slogged through piles of mud in Ishinomaki and Kesenuma, Japan, finding a common bond in pulling Anpanmon storybooks, silverware, tatami mats, and squid from piles of foul-smelling, slime-ridden, rotting mud, a mud that lent a particular stench to the atmosphere and is still present on, my, on both my boots and in my mind every time I close my eyes and remember standing there. To uh, capture some of the emotions, my friends and I penned some haiku, which is a traditional method of Japanese poetry, and I'd like to share one with you right now. Earthquake, tsunami, sight and smell I can't forget, I am not the same. We stood in the midst of a surreal devastation. Take pictures of the bay town of Rikuzen Takata, another town we visited just north of Sendai and compare those pictures side by side with photos of Hiroshima's Ground Zero. In Hiroshima, one lone building was left standing amidst what was once a bustling city center, while in Rikuzen Takata, one lone pine stood where a forest once dominated the skyline. I paint this picture to state a simple case. Why complicate things more when we can't even protect against the natural disasters of floods, tornadoes, droughts, hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis that already covered this planet. No doubt, Japan has already come far along the road to recovery from the impacts of the earthquake and tsunami. And we're proud, our flight of friendship group is proud to have done what little we could. But Japan still struggles to this day with grasping the entirety of the impacts from the meltdowns at Fukushima. Some of you may ask, why do I care? Well, I am Nikkei. These events are part of my heritage. Egusa is actually, uh, as in the introduction, an unusual Japanese name from the Hiroshima area. My father gave this heritage to me as it was given to him within the confines of the internment camp of Gila River, Arizona. Also, on August 6, 1945, my great aunt, a junior in high school, was helping reinforce coastal fortifications outside Hiroshima and so survived a fate that most of her classmates, still back in school, did not. I'm not sure if it's that I feel some modicum of personal guilt for knowing what I know, or if it is just the natural guilt any living soul might feel as they stroll through the Hiroshima Peace Park. 
We all have our own demons, but I have one more I'd like to share. For you see, in the early hours of December 7th, 1941, my great uncle, Takashige Egusa, led a task force of 88 dive bombers into an enemy harbor, creating a chain of events that, 44 months later, ended in the mushroom clouds of nuclear devastation. I realize now that natural disasters are indeed tragic, but it is a bit sadder for all of us when we witness a tragedy we've bestowed upon ourselves. Let us learn. Thank you. So before we have our last speaker, wanted to just say thank you to all of you for being here today. 